Hello and welcome back to SAS Factory. My name is Volkata, and today is the dawning of a new day. Yes, after last episode we got to explore the changes from Update 6 and look at the terrain and see what is in our way and what isn't. And finally we can return to our original build path and I'm just so excited I can't wait to do it. You know, we're going to finally get to ramp up on our computers. You know, we didn't go back to the computer building and get all four of the machines running because, you know, we knew that that building was in danger anyway. And even though we had the additional rubber coming in that we needed, we just didn't mess with it. And, you know, we really need to get quartz. We knew our nodes were there, you know, and we haven't gotten any of the electronics up and running. So today is the day that we finally get to go back and start doing that, as well as start actually fixing what we're going to run into for update 6. So for today that's going to be our start point. We're going to go and get that computer building moved so that we can actually start using it at full capacity and not have to worry about it in update 6. And then we'll look see what we can do next. Probably get into quartz because I think that's really what we need to do before we start doing anything else. Ramping up electronics wouldn't do us much good because we can't even get into oscillators without quartz. So I think that's probably going to be today's priorities. And, you know, we'll just see what all we can fit in. But I cannot wait to get started. And we have a hard drive that is still waiting to be finished, which I think would probably be about done now. <laughs> Excellent. Pretty close. <laughs> this is the only thing we got left to do while we're here, and then we're going to head to the job site. All right. Oh, an alternate for concrete. And we keep talking about we need to get one of these and that would actually be pretty good because we have so much rubber oh another modular frame recipe that would be good cable we're, just, we're not using that in anything oh boy looking at this the heavy flexible frame you know we already have an alternate for the heavy modular frame but it's a bit demanding on our steel and we're looking at this steel pipes are taken out of it entirely well uh, let's see here higher capacity 3.75 versus 2.8 so we'd get more per minute uh, we only get one per process but let's look at this uh, the encased industrial beams I mean we did just reinforce our manufacturing of them but they are a pain to get so if we can reduce those that's always good looks like in the original recipe that we were using we were getting three for 10 and this one would get three frames for nine. So that would also save us on that. It would save us on all the steel pipes. We would be adding screws back, but you know, we can use a little bit of steel that we're saving to just make, you know, steel screws. So that's, that's excellent. Yeah, I think we're gonna take that. That's gonna be it. And we don't have any more hard drives. <laughs> all right, uh, I think we've dealt down enough here. We got so much to do for today. So let's get to the work site. So we're on our way to the work site, and as you can see, we've started a little bit of preparation for Update 6. If you saw last episode, we noted that these tracks actually need to move a little bit because there are going to be new obstacles in the way. And if I spaced that out properly, then that turn right there when we start using it in Update 6 will actually pass through a waterfall. It should be pretty cool but uh, some of it still needs to be adjusted and still needs to be tested, so I haven't actually activated it. There's a break in the line on purpose so that the AI won't bother using it. And, uh, you know, I'll do that off camera when I want to switch back and forth between update six and this version, just to make sure that our things are moved to the right places. So here is our, our wonderful computer building. Here is our clone of the computer building. You can see I still have to ground it. I haven't done anything with it. All I did was use the save utility, save editor utility, to literally just draw a box around this thing and copy and paste it. So hopefully that all works. <laughs> but you know, this is probably the most complex building that we have, or most intricate building that we have in our factory. And 
I really did not, you know, like the thought of having to rebuild it brick for brick, you know, just a few feet over to, uh, to get us around, you know, the, the giant column that will be in the way. Oh, this is going to hurt. Uh, <laughs> uh, in update six, you know, so this, this space is lost to us. The building here will need a small adjustment. And we'll probably look at it in update six again. I'm not sure. Uh, I did a little bit more of a walkthrough, but there wasn't time. You know, I got it got cut from the video. But basically, there is an intrusion into this area, but not past this line. So we should be able to just move that wall in one line, and this building will remain functional. I think it'll be just fine. So this building, we don't have to move. And that's great because I don't really want to have to move it. <laughs> we'll just have to have the quick wire come in probably, you know, through the roof the way we did on the other side because that wall is compromised. But that's it. And uh, I think that the first thing we need to do is we need to do our cleanup here. We need to get this building tore down. And we need to run all of these. Let me get a better look here. Let's get our ramps. Oh, much, much better. Okay. So what we'll need to do is rerun all those lines already here. I think that I want to leave these top ones, you know, as they are. I... Probably, you know, because we can we can run all of those on stacked conveyors, and then have you know some go on the bottom, and then the second tier pop up and go to the top because these are the ones that are going to the rafters, and you know the rafters were kind of part of the charm of this building, and I want to continue to use that. So I don't think we'll move any of those. I think this is all lined up fairly well if we just look at a general, yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to clear. We'll make sure that one clears as well. You know, the but again, I think that the the biggest, you know, in relation to this this building, I think that the the biggest time waster is going to be tearing this thing down because, I mean, it really took a, not only a lot to build it, but it's a lot of intricate bits with all the beams and all the little connectors in between them, uh, and just all the, all the little stuff. You know, you know, a thing can't be in two places at one time, right? That's, that's not possible. We, you know, if this is truly that building, then, then maybe that building isn't really there. Maybe it's just an illusion. You know, maybe... Maybe if we really believe, if we really believe that this is just an illusion, maybe, maybe it really isn't there at all. Wow, that, that actually worked. I'll be. Excellent. All right, well then I guess we can just get straight to drawing out the platforms and, you know, getting things connected. And we don't have the plastic. <laughs> That's all right. We have we have plastic being delivered up there, so we don't have to go far for it. Plus, we have a bunch on our train. And yeah, that's what we're gonna do then. Let's get these foundations built out and start redirecting all these so our computers can start flowing again, and we can get on with doing the new stuff that we want to do for today. Which will most likely be to start getting our quartz products begun. <laughs> this is something that we really have been needing to do. You know, we have put off all of our quartz stuff because the quartz nodes we wanted to use were here and we we're going to need them in manufacturing. So that is something that we can at least get 
our miners down, which will be up, you know, up there <laughs> somewhere. I could use a telescope, you know, that'd be pretty cool. And uh, maybe start to map out what we're going to do with our quartz. You know, we have, let's see here, a couple of alternate recipes. We have the crystal alternate which will require water and well you know we got water right there right next to it so that's perfect that's gonna be easy enough to incorporate and our new silica recipe which will use limestone you know strictly speaking we don't need to use either one of them or don't have to but I think we should because you know the quartz nodes are limited and the most we can milk out of them uh, is, you know, really in our favor. All right, so we need to figure out what everything went to and where it's going now. now I know these platforms are kind of high, and we could have pushed that building down when we relocated it, but these two buildings were always intended to be two-story eventually. You know, I say two buildings, right? There's one here. There's going to be another one right there, which will be our AI limiters. And I always expected that we'd put a second story on them and merge the output. So this building will have another version of itself on top of it. And we can just have one output coming down and they'll come out just probably like the bottom floor of the next one. Something like that. I think it'll work out pretty well. So we'll worry about that when the time comes. But for now, we need to figure out what goes where and line them all up and get them going. I think these, so two of these are inputs, two of them are outputs. I think the two middle are the outputs. Let's get a door. <laughs> or at least a hole for now. And yeah, make sure this building looks all right. Of course, we don't have our menagerie anymore to look down at, but um, I guess we can look down at water. <laughs> so that, that platform right there was what I centered the building on because when I used the edit tool to move the building I needed something to attach it to and I wanted to make sure that it was still on the grid so it is still an exact you know alignment with everything else and so that's what that is I'll have to delete it at some point but I'm going to go through here figure out what everything is so obviously that is the rubber and get everything connected make sure that the belt speeds are correct we also can take this opportunity to activate all four of these computer manufacturers because these two were not running remember we didn't have enough rubber coming in to run all four in fact we didn't even have enough to run two of them we were doing two of them but we were at a deficit but now we have the output necessary that we can run all four of them and i'll make sure that we have everything else going, right? We, we might need more circuit boards. We may actually need to double this building up early. But let me uh, let me start connecting, do some math, and let me bring you, bring you right back here after we get this cleaned up a bit. All right, all the belts are hooked up, at least for the computers. Obviously, the oscillators aren't a thing yet, so I didn't even bother running those belts. But... These are the secondary set of computer manufacturers that are now online. <laughs> so we have doubled our computer manufacturing output. I did need to do a little bit of upgrading of belts, but more importantly, I had to find my way out. <laughs> I had to double the size of our circuit board building. Just, it just had to be done. We were producing exactly the amount of circuit boards that we needed for two machines, 52.5 and 52.5, right? So that would be, yeah, <laughs> making sure the Mark II belt was enough. And, uh, you know, I'd remember then that we, that was exactly how we had done it. So I've doubled up the manufacturing and we are now producing exactly the amount of circuit boards we need for four machines, which is excellent. All right, I mean, it would be kind of nice to have some overflow. You know, maybe we'll address that in the future, but for now, I'm fine <laughs> with it. And uh, yeah, it was it was, a, it was a fair amount of work. You know, uh, 
Yeah, I had mentioned at the end of last episode that I can get rid of this. That the um, or one of the casualties of you know, of the update six experiment was that the time lapse mod got updated and. Unfortunately, you know, I'd been working in an older version of it intentionally. And that was... So it's, uh, it's a different green on the bottom floor. <laughs> uh, and that it had updated itself. And then, unfortunately, it broke... Well, update 5, right? I, I, if I had that mod loaded and I joined back into update 5 and tried to save the game, Satisfactor would just crash, wouldn't even save. And I found that there was an option in the mod manager to change versions. But it didn't actually look like it did anything when I selected the previous version. But I, I loaded it up and did a test save and I was able to save just fine. However, I tried to time lapse doing this and there were a couple of problems. Uh, first of all, the, the time lapse was super dark, like as if the brightness or contrast was turned to zero super dark and i thought well you know what in post edit i can probably brighten it up but then when i actually tried to run it while doing an actual proper build the game stuttered every time it took a screenshot every single time and since it's taking a screenshot every second it was just uh build stutter build stutter build stutter build and you know these time lapses that i do uh, normally you see them in a what minute and a half two minutes they often cover, uh, you know, an hour or two hours, three hours worth of work, something like that, you know, maybe more. And, you know, I wasn't going to spend two hours rebuilding this thing, being stopped every single second. <laughs> so, no time lapse. And uh, that's just what it is. So, that's all right. We, uh, we got it done. You know, we've already, we've already seen this in the past. We're doing a brighter green for the top floor. It's subtle, but you know it's change. And uh, we really didn't need to see it again. So that's okay. I'm fine with that. And there we go. Small differences. Like I said, I, I did a... So it's a, it's a darker green on the bottom. Slightly lighter green, and you can't really tell it here. But in the light, you can kind of tell it. And the point is it's to kind of create a gradient. And... Uh, uh, it swapped the colors of the machines, green and, and orange, orange and green. Let me get outside here. No particular reason, just to vary it up a little bit. But you see, that's a, actually a brighter green than this, and it looks like a, a lighting gradient. So I'm, I'm very pleased with the way it came out. And uh, yeah, all right. So we're done with this. <laughs> we're done with this complete. So I think. The next priority is going to be to get the miners on the quartz nodes and start to plan out, you know, how are we going to actually do this? Because it's not going to be straightforward since we're doing two different alternate recipes. We'll probably have two separate areas that we'll pipe the, the raw quartz to. And, and, you know, largely, I think it'll go back to the train station. But I think that we're going to need some of it. We're obviously going to need some of it here for the oscillators. Yeah, so the, the crystal quartz will end up going to the oscillators. I don't think we have an immediate need for the silica, but we will in, in the future. Plus, we use silica when we make these windows. And we've been running on a stock that we made a long time ago using bio burners over at the original, you know, little quartz plateau that we had went to. So, you know, we've been using that up, and it'd be nice to have an actual income of it. But all right, let's, uh, let's wrap this and get the miners placed and, uh, you know, start up kind of uh, figuring out the areas. And uh, when I have something, I'll bring it back and show you what we're doing. Oh, that's such a nice view from up here. <laughs> uh, I really like, I like high places. I, I'm, I've always been a fan of heights. But uh, no time for that right now. <laughs> Now we have a plan now, and I think it's going to come together pretty nicely. 
you know, I, <laughs> I, I often toss up buildings just to do the math real easy, you know, kind of visualize what the rates are for the recipes. I find it to be the easiest way to, to do it. And then, you know, a little calculator and, and uh, Bob's your uncle. So obviously I needed the workshop here for the miners because they require portable miners. But we have two miners at 240 quarts each. And I think for simplicity's sake, we're going to split them evenly. One miner is going to be silica, one miner is going to be quartz crystal. And we're not going to bother with the silica today because we really frankly don't have time. And we also don't have an immediate use for it. We do still have an okay stock of silica for making windows. They don't take a whole lot. But we will have a use very soon for the quartz crystal. So that's the one we're going to do for today. And this is the recipe we're going to use, the pure quartz crystal or pure, <laughs> yeah, pure quartz crystal. And it's going to eat up 67.5 per minute, uh, you know, from a 240 line coming from the miner. That's going to be about three and a half refineries. So that's not bad at all. It's actually pretty easy. And the water is, you know, we did get 120 per pump. So this is going to be just over two pumps for three and a half of these. Pretty simple with a really generous output. So that's, that's fantastic. 52.5 out of just one refinery alone. And this is going to be our end goal with it is that, you know, we have the four manufacturers in the computer building on the other side that are going to be dedicated to this recipe for the oscillators. And they're only using 18.75 per minute, so four of them is going to be 75 quarts per minute. We will easily outstrip that, which is fantastic, and then we'll probably ship the rest of it to our storage at home. And, uh, you know, we're not going to do that today for the, the oscillator. We still have to set up AI limiters, but we are going to knock out the quartz crystal, and that's what we're going to do right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to run that down, and I don't know if I showed it on camera when we originally came out here and we mapped out all of this area and we placed the initial platforms for the train station. I actually went through here. I, I feel like I did this on camera, but I went through and looked for areas that we could kind of draw out foundations that wouldn't run into the terrain. And I kind of left some just to kind of remind myself of what I found. And so this is a good set of dimensions right here that we can expand on and make this into, you know, a small building. And I don't know if this is going to be enough for the four refineries. We might have to expand a little bit. We, we can, though. We can expand it a little bit there. And the reason why I stop these buildings sometimes short like this is because I try not to block the natural travel path. Like, if we were driving around our Explorer, this is how we get through that terrain and make it on, you know, through the rest of the area. Plus, it turns and it goes up that ramp. That's how we get up here. So, generally speaking, when I'm placing new buildings, when they're on the terrain, that's kind of what I'm trying to avoid. I didn't point it out. Like, even back at our home area, there are areas around where we did the motors and all that where there actually are gaps I don't think I mentioned specifically around the ramps to keep it open for travel. Realistically speaking, we're not going to be using the Explorer through here probably ever again, especially now that we have a rail network. So, you know, if we need to expand it, we'll expand it. But, uh, yeah, it shouldn't take up too much space. You know, refineries are taller than they are wide. And we'll need some water, so, you know, a couple of water extractors out there, and we'll be set. So I think we're going to just jump down there and start building real quick. So let's get to it.
<laughs> All right, there it is. There it is. A little colorful. You know, I was trying to kind of emulate the, uh, the actual quartz. <laughs> I, uh, I actually dropped this on the ground and put it next to some walls and tested out some paint colors that kind of best represented what the colors were. And then this is supposed to kind of be the basket. And then, you know, there's the upper rim. And then most of the quartz is kind of this darker purple, but there are some highlights in it. So that's kind of what I went with in this one. And then, of course, blue for the water. We need some support here. There, that looks better. <laughs> all right, also, all we need to do is turn it, in, uh, turn it on. And uh, as you obviously, I'm sure, noticed, I uh, managed to fix the time lapsing. <laughs> So, uh, you know, assuming, assuming that went right, there should have been a time lapse of that build. And uh, just, I'm happy to, I, I got it down, I got the older version up and running now, I think. And I'm able to save and everything should be good now. All right, this should be turning on. That miner over there is the one that we're using. Also an added benefit to this build design is that we have another way up to the station. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to keep it like this or not, but I thought it'd be kind of funny to connect it. There we go. It's <laughs> straight up to the station. So the water should be pumping. The, yep, crystal quartz is coming, or this, the quartz. <laughs> we'll be turning them into crystals now. And it all should be hitting pretty soon. Now, I think that we're high enough, or I guess low enough, for the water to flow. It's possible that we need a water pump. We're going to find that out right now. Drop down here. Oh, overshot a little bit. That's all right. So are we getting water? We are not getting water. Okay, water pump necessary. All right, now we should be getting water. There it goes, excellent. Minor detail, minor detail. Yeah, it looks like it's cone full, excellent. So I'll need to do a little bit of math for the underclocking and uh, I'll, I'll take care of that off camera, not a big deal. But we have the quartz crystal now, excellent. <laughs> and we have a little storage for it up in the train station. I don't have it going to any one of the actual, you know, freight platforms yet. Because it's just, that's something I'll work out later. We don't need it at home yet. And it'll just go into a storage. This is just going to a dead end. So, you know, we're going to need that in the building over there pretty soon. But we have this temporary storage in between that will start to fill up pretty fast, actually, because we are bringing it in pretty good. Look at this go. Nice. Oh, I'm so glad to finally be able to do these. You know, it just, we were too afraid to build in this area. So we had to put it on hold. So that's, that's excellent. But uh, all right, I think it's about it for time. So let's get back home and uh, wrap this up. Get my train and I'll see you back at the house. All right, that's a wrap. Excellent. So good. I, I can't express how nice it feels to finally be able to move forward with all these projects that we had on hold you know i i, I want to do all of them and i want to do all of them at the same time you know we, we go over the area and i'm like ah let's do the crystal quartz oh let's do the silica no let's get the ai nodes and and there's so much <laughs> i said ai nodes that's a heart space shipwrecker term <laughs> ai limiters and, you know, it just, I want to do all of it. And I'm just so glad that we can now start to do all of it. But, of course, <laughs> I don't want to just go off camera and just get it all caught up. You know, we need to kind of, we need to follow the process. And uh, it's exciting to be able to do it. And I'm, I'm glad. I'm just having a lot of fun. But uh, that's, that's definitely it for today. We are so out of time. You know, next episode, we'll probably get the AI limiters knocked out. And maybe the silica... Maybe instead the oscillators, not really sure. You know, we'll see how things go. And we need to continue to prepare for 
update six. We need to get over to the oil area and tear all that down and make sure that everything is aligned properly, especially with the rails. And make sure also that the things that we're building right now, that there weren't slight changes maybe in the terrain that we didn't notice. So there's still always that risk when we need to, you know, go back and forth, do a little bit of checking out. But thank you so very much for coming out. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. The comments have been wonderful. And uh, I know some people have noted that I'm missing a Sunday here and there. And you know, I mentioned that it was going to be a thing that there are time pressures on me in real life and some of them are still ramping up. So my time to play and record and, and try to do effects and, and all the air stuff is becoming further restricted. This is the thing I enjoy doing. This is kind of my escape. So this is something I'm definitely going to keep doing. They're just, you know, we still, we might miss a day a little bit more often than not, but I appreciate you guys sticking around and coming back when I do. And, uh, you know, we'll definitely try to keep it at least on Sundays, even if I miss a Sunday, then always the next Sunday. But again, thank you so very much for coming out. If you, uh, if you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and uh, leave a comment if you have anything you'd like to say or to say hi. And if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe. But uh, definitely come back for the next episode. We have so much to do and I can't wait to get started on it. So thanks for watching.